let's go to the second one. The second question from you guys, uh, which says, hello guys, congratulations for a very interesting video. Well, thank you. I would like to ask how I can start learning to use IDA and where to practice on and where to practice on. Which binaries, for example, to disassemble or decompile? Thanks. So uh, I don't have too much to say on this. Uh, this is more like your uh, area of expertise, Alexis. But what I want to say is that a couple of months ago, I believe, or a little less than a year ago, um, I was looking a lot into trying to learn uh, reverse engineering and uh, model work analysis myself. And one of the best resources was uh, crackmes.1 and we'll link to everything in the description. So don't worry about memorizing this. So this website, crackmes.1 uh, is actually, it contains all, uh, all of the reverse engineering exercises that were um, on this uh, website called crackme.de, which was a very popular website and no longer exists uh, for I don't know what reason. And uh, these are actually categorized into different dif uh, difficulty levels uh, from all the way from beginner to advanced. And um, they are on not only on C and C++, but they are, they are also uh, reverse engineering challenges for, uh, for .NET, for Assembler, or Java, Visual Basic, uh, and so on. So um, yeah, go look into crackmes.1. And the thing is that they not only have the challenges, but they also have like uh, the walkthroughs. So I believe uh, most, uh, most if not all of the challenges have also the walkthroughs there by the author or by some other people. Um, and then uh, what I will also recommend is this book called Reverse Engineering for Beginners which uh, can be found at beginners.re. And this is a book by Dennis uh, Urichev. Yeah. So this is a 1000 plus page book that honestly, it contains everything you need uh, to get yourself uh, started and practice reverse engineering all the way up to advanced level. So it, it, it's actually a free book. You just go to that website and you download it. And the, uh, the practical examples in the book um, are for only debug, um, and they're also for IDA, and I believe, if, if I'm not mistaken, uh, they're, they're also for other uh, debuggers from what I know. And finally, or not finally, uh, there is also the workshop that's available at begin.re. Once again, all the links in the description. So this is a free workshop that's been put up by two people, I guess. Uh, um, and uh, that would be, it's super practical, which uh, you, some of you know that I'm, uh, that's my thing. Um, and like I said, it's free and it's worth looking at. And of course you have a ton of good free resources online. You just have to know how to look for it. But, but since all of you are like, uh, hackers and you actually like this stuff your uh, you have curiosity in your nature so be sure how to uh, know how to look for stuff online but don't look into too much stuff take one of these resources and actually start with that resource once you get familiarized with it once you feel like you're good with that move on to something else. Don't try to chase like 10 things at a time. So yeah, I guess uh, that, that's, uh, that's what I wanted to say with uh, respect to this question. Fellas, check out my Python basics course to learn the fundamentals of Python you need in cybersecurity. There's a discount link in the description. What do you say, Alexis? Um, yeah, so this is a, it's, it's a very good question. One that I think I, I don't usually get regarding malware analysis, uh, more so because it's, 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 it's focused on, on a particular tool, which I think is great. And it's, it's one of the issues with, with such a diverse market in terms of the, the various disassemblers uh, you have out there. So, you know, you mentioned uh, just a few. You have uh, either, either Pro, uh, you have, um, you have Oli, the Oli Debugger. Uh, Ghidra and uh, the I think the radar uh, disassembler as well. So 
uh, th those are just a few of you know plethora of of, of, of debuggers and uh, and disassemblers that you have out there. So I think uh, when it comes down to to IDA, uh, I, I personally learned IDA by you know uh, trying out various uh, various uh, what would you call them. Uh, various samples i was working with uh with real malware samples uh more specifically with uh, with ransomware uh, now, now you mentioned a very good site um i think it was uh, crackmes.one and yeah i do remember the old domain being on uh crackmes dot um i can't remember it dot de dot de yeah. yeah um so uh, that's one great resource if you're looking for a structured uh, practical approach now if you do want to to to, to get started with uh, with real samples and of course you do need to you do need to exercise caution when using them uh this is uh, i think the website is called dasmalware.eu uh, uh the link to 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 this website will be in the description section so you can check it out for yourself this uh, has like uh, various uh samples uh, you know ransomware uh, key loggers uh, et cetera, et cetera. So you have tons of samples that you can work with there. Uh, now regarding uh, IDA Pro, uh, I personally, as I said, uh, learned IDA by uh, by using the tool and uh, looking through a few blogs. Uh, but one book that really did help me uh, a lot uh, in regards to mastering IDA, I haven't mastered it yet, but um, I'm working on it. Uh, that book is uh, is called the uh, the IDA Pro uh, the IDA Pro book, that's actually what it's called. And it's by Chris, uh, it's by Chris Eagle. Um, so it, it really, it really does cover the various, uh, the various aspects uh, of uh, IDA Pro and the various bits that you should be focusing on in regards to improving your skills. So, you know, whether it be working on your, uh, your efficiency uh, with key, with keyboard shortcuts and, you know, just getting to know the tool a lot more, but, uh, in order to get good with IDA uh, and to to understand it, uh, you know, at its core, I think you need to you need to actually just uh, uh, approach it uh, practically, uh, and this can only be done by by going through real samples. Um, I do have a few other blogs that uh, that do have write ups for these samples. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have them in front of me, so I'll be posting them in the description as well, so you can check them out if you are interested in in that. Um, so that's pretty much all that I have to say about that. I mean, uh, IDA Pro is uh, is a very uh, practical tool, so I think that that's the only way to approach it. Of course, uh, and we actually need to be super specific when answering these questions because I, I believe uh, this sort of discussion, especially when testing uh, real uh, uh, real malware. Uh, out there in the wild, I guess we could do a an entire series on that topic alone, on how to set up a virtual environment to make sure that uh, you are able to efficiently test the malware yes. so that uh, the malware would know or wouldn't be, from what I know, there are malware which can actually sort of like sense they are in a virtualized yes. environment and some of the their actions aren't triggered because they, it's kind of a protective mode. They wouldn't be triggered unless they would be on an operating system which is not sandboxed or virtualized. I think this would be an entire discussion and we, we could get into it. Uh, maybe some of you guys are interested. We might get to, into this stuff. I think Alexis would probably <laughs> like that. Or am, am, I, am I wrong here? Um, yeah, it's uh, it's actually it's it's quite interesting what what you just said and uh, very very important um, and I think it'll, it'll actually turn into a very interesting discussion uh, onwards if if we, if we do want to go down that route. Um, so yeah, we we do have uh, what what we call uh, VM busting malware, where, where they actually uh, they, through various signatures uh, they're able to detect whether they're in a virtual machine and they're able to if you do have unfortunately have a bridged connection to your to your host operating system, they're actually able to to propagate Escape. themselves, yeah, and and, yeah, and to, yeah. to to infect your your host operating system. So that's a rabbit hole that we we can go down. I'm I'm sure uh, in quite in depth, and uh, it will be very 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 interesting. 